now 5am and we're on our way to the Taj Mahal. <laughs> this is the way to do it, you've got to deliver a whirling. It opens at 6 o'clock. We've actually got a guide as well today to take us around the Taj Mahal and the Red Fort. It's always been a way better experience when we get a guide. Uh, the guide cost us 1,500 rupees for a day. Oh, dinner at that place was very good by the way. Proper home cooked Indian meal. Banging. Yeah, like paneer butter masala there, then rice. Chapati breads, vegetables, vegetables dal, they had everything there, it was well nice. It was all home cooked as well, really good quality. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Like how you'd imagine a nice Indian home cooked dinner to be. That's what it was, there was so much food there, definitely recommend. What the Tuk Tuk will do is drop you off at an area where they basically take you in on a golf cart. It's completely normal, don't worry. Tuk Tuk driver will take you somewhere dodgy. Entrance, 1,300 rupees each. If you're an Indian, you're looking at 45 rupees per person to get in and 245 if you want to do the mausoleum as well. Very strict security um, regime here. Yeah, you have to put your bag through the scanner, a proper frisk you as well, and here we are. So the Taj Mahal was actually open to the public in 1959. It hasn't really been open that long, is it? considering it was built like a hundred years before that. Mm. It took 22 years to build this. And you see all them flowers up there as well. That's not painting. That's actually precious stones. It's called inlay art. And they put the stones in the marble. That's why this place is so famous because it's the only place in the world where you're going to find that is in Agra and the Taj Mahal. Pretty cool. Now it looks mad. Apparently, getting to that spot to get that photo straight down the middle there is like impossible in the peak season because there's so many people here a couple of fun facts about the Taj Mahal the architect was from Turkey the inlay art is Persian and the carvings were all from Italian so people they've got people from all around the globe to build this uh, 20,000 people and they all basically lived in a massive camp right over at the south gate and the descendants of those people still live there today and they still practice this inlay art. It's well interesting, mate. You need a guide for this. Or we wouldn't have appreciated it properly otherwise. And the reason this was actually built in the first place was because there was a king who had three wives. She had like 14 children in 18 years. Eight of them died, six survived. When she died on her 14th pregnancy, he built this basically in her memory. Uh, it started off as like a grave and then he built this on top of it and uh, this is what you see today. He was actually building one for his own death as well. He tried building a black Taj Mahal across the river, identical, and the foundations of them are still there now. That's where we were yesterday, but obviously we had no guide. We didn't really understand what we were even at. And he actually never got to finish it because he had three sons. The third son was a bad son, basically killed all his brothers and then got the king put in jail and the, the king died there. That was it, that's the end of the story. Pretty, pretty dark but yeah and he never got to finish his black Taj Mahal which actually I think it would look sick in black this is all all this white marble is from Rajasthan as well from the mines there don't know where they would have got black marble from so the Queen died and then they started construction of this in 1631 and it took them 22 years to build Matt. She, she was actually first buried right here and then he uh, once the construction started he moved her body inside King Shajrahan. King Shajrahan, his name was. And then you'll notice there's two buildings, one either side of the Taj Mahal. The one on the left-hand side, looking at the Taj Mahal from inside, is a mosque. 
and the one on the right hand side is not a mask it's just basically to maintain symmetry in the gardens basically if you have one this side you have to have one that side from Afghanistan, red is the coral from the Red Sea. Wow. Use this kind of part. Yeah. So over 400 years it's been here and not one single one of these little stones has come out. It's because they used a proper glue back then. It was like a solid glue that had to melt it down and then once it's melted down it will then go hard again and you cannot use it again. So it's like a special glue that we can't get these days. Although actually I've just noticed one is out. Of them, of the generation of them. Yeah. If I know the recipe, I can yeah. tell you two also as well. Yeah. You can make the same recipe at home as well. Yeah. So that's why. Yeah. Now you're not allowed to film inside there, but that is insane. Insane. <sighs> Honestly, you have no idea. To be completely honest, the best bit is probably in there. The the inlay art in there is insane. It's and also. It had to be perfect. Like imagine all of this was made by hand. They had no machines, no nothing. In there is no different. They've got inlay art all over the place. It had to all be perfect. There's big slabs of marble in there that have been carved and the, the carving is so intricate. And if, if they did even one millimeter wrong, it gets thrown away and they start again. Every single piece in there is exactly the same as the next. There is nothing wrong with them. It's fucking mind blowing how long that would have taken. The inlay art in there is like next level. There's a different stone in there to anywhere else in this place. And that's called Orange Carnelian. And it's basically a fire stone. It was the wife's favorite stone. When you shine a light through it, the light moves through the stone and you and it sort of lights the whole stone up. It's, it's amazing. I think the dome on this building weighs 12,000 tons. It is all made, the whole thing, this whole thing is made of pure white marble, a dome. <laughs> the dome on top is said to weigh 12,000 tons. Imagine that. Apparently the Eiffel Tower, the whole thing weighs 8,800 tons. You can't skip this. You just can't. The 18 hour bus journey was worth it. The 18 hour bus journey was worth it. 100% was worth it. Yeah, and the place we were at yesterday over there, that's not just some viewpoint. Well, like we thought it was. That's actually the foundations of where he was going to create the black Taj Mahal for himself, for his own death. Shot and we were over there yesterday and we had no idea. Yeah, there was no blurb though, was there? there no, there was, was no nothing over there. There's no like signage, no nothing. We, I don't even think we really even looked at the room, did we? No. I looked because there was a cow inside. Yeah, the only reason we noticed that that was even there was because Nat, Nat saw a cow in there. <laughs> This is quite possibly the most magnificent building I've ever seen. It's definitely up there. I think if you came here in high season, it would probably be a different different experience because it gets so busy here. He said it is just absolutely rammed in here when it's high season. So we're lucky to come here early morning, in low season, a handful of people here. Such a nice way to experience it. All the inlay art, all these colors and everything, none of that's paint, it's not paint. It's all stones that have been put into the marble. <sighs> Mad. It's actually getting busy already down there. So that bench, oh, I didn't tell you guys this when we were down there, but this photo we took, that bench is called the Lady Diana bench because that's where Lady Diana sat when she came here and had a famous photo in front of the Taj Mahal. They even built these four pillars around the outside, leaning just slightly out. The reason for that is so that if there's an earthquake or anything happens and they somehow fall, they will never fall into the Taj Mahal. They will always fall out and it won't damage the building. 
very interesting. What a great time to be alive. Like this was only opened not even 100 years ago and it was built in 1629. Sixteen thirty one, sixteen fifty three. Sixteen fifty three it opened. Uh, not opened. It was finished. It's just taking it all in. Also in Agra here, there are a lot of these little stores that sell the inlay art um, souvenirs and they're stunning. They're out of our price range, but they are absolutely stunning. It's all inlay art, the same as the Taj Mahal and it's stuff like this. Oh no, I do like that. I don't know what is said to me. If you really want, he will give you a good discount on that. Good discount on that. It is bigger than that place. How much all of that, all the colours you see in this marble are not paint, they are stones, they are precious stones put in there, it's fucking mind blowing how long these must take to make, like the vases here as well, look at these. All that colour, right, look at these as well. They're absolutely stunning, you can get tables as well, the guy at our, you see the table at the homestay we're staying at? He's got the big dining room table and he's got coffee t coffee table as well, like this. See how it's like in layer. That's all stones in there. That's not that's not paint. It's quite expensive though. Like for example, that there, that tabletop. You're looking at around twelve thousand pounds. As I said, this is all the stuff's way out of our budget. But and like a table like one of these tables here, looking at about ten thousand pounds. So I was talking to the owner of our hotel and he was saying that this, this uh, abandoned shopping centre is because all the businesses here decided to up and leave because they were building the metro outside. No parking, no nothing here anymore. So uh, everyone's decided that it's not a good idea to stay here and everyone just upped and left. That's why it's abandoned. Mad. You don't know there's no barbers in here. I'm looking for a barbers. I've had my hair cut everywhere so far and I want to see how good the Indians are at cutting hair. Well, Daniel, how did the Indians do with your haircut? I think they've actually done a great job. Yeah. I think, he's done, I think he's done a great job. Really good. And how much did you pay? Uh, 850 rupees for everything. Quite, quite expensive. Too. It's probably the most expensive one I've had since I've left home. Yeah, India's not India's not that cheap though, is it? No, it's affordable. Hmm. Here we go. All right, now it is 4 p.m. We're off to Agra Fort. There is a red fort in Delhi, and we were recommended not to go to that one, but to go to this one. It's a, apparently um, a lot more magnificent. So let's go and check it out. This is a re <coughs> residence of Mughal dynasty. Alright, we're in. Good thing about getting a guide is you actually skip all the queues. Yeah. Uh, it cost us 600 rupees per person to get in. It's usually 650, but if you keep your ticket from the Taj Mahal, you get 50 rupees off. Okay, now this fort is over 2.5 kilometers squared. That's a large area. Apparently 80% of it is used by the Indian army and 20% is open to tourists. Here you can see the beautiful planet. Is it dead? 
Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I really like the squirrels, they're so cute. <laughs> Do you have also in England? Uh, yes. Yeah, but they're boring. Yeah, but not like this. Not no, like that. They're a little a bit big, bigger, bigger and, and uh, they're grey. Grey, grey. Grey and brown. Yeah. So this place is actually quite heavily linked with uh, the Taj Mahal. The king who built the Taj Mahal lived here with his wife. Obviously, when she died, he then built the Taj Mahal. And uh, obviously, as he was trying to build his own Taj Mahal, the black one, his son locked him up, and he actually locked him up right here in that tower right there. Very interesting. It's these shoes, man, they're so slippery. You can't actually go in there because it's actually in the part, part of the fort that is occupied by the Indian army. It's not part of the 20% the tourists can visit, but you can still see it and it's pretty cool. And there's actually a place here, one of the daughter's rooms is where you can see a view of the Taj Mahal from here. So we're gonna go and check that out in a minute. Pretty interesting stuff. I like how they, they're linked. You should do the Taj Mahal first because then you, you know, you already learn about the story of the Taj Mahal and then you can come here and see how that guy lived, how he was locked up, etc. Yeah, I know. So this was the king's palace where he lived, uh, King Shah Jahan. Uh, and he made this, he made it all out of what the same white marble that he built the Taj Mahal with. Uh, and he loved white marble. Look at here, this is the uh, same marble, yeah. used the carving, but you can see, in Taj was totally white. Yeah. It's dark. Yeah. yeah. Actually, he used the painting over here. And painting cannot stay for the long time in the white marble. Yeah. So that's why this painting has been removed now. So maybe that's why he thought to use the inlay art. Yeah. yeah. So this is the this is the palace where he lived. The famous Taj Mahal the, uh, king. Shah Jahan. Shah Jahan. Yeah. Shah Jahan. Shah Jahan. Shah Jahan, I keep getting it wrong. Um, yeah, and you see how, I don't know if you can see this, right, but it's dim in colour. That's because he painted it. It was all painted, they had all carpet in here and everything. So that's might be why he designed the Taj Mahal to, to have the inlay art instead of using the paint because the paint will ruin the marble after a while. It won't stay, whereas the inlay art is their stones, they're gonna be in there forever. Oh yeah, you do get a good view. <clears throat> so yeah, he actually could see the Taj Mahal from his prison cell in the tower. Would have been crazy. Imagine being locked up by your own son and then just looking out at your your memorial for your dead wife. No, he built it after, didn't he? No, he built the... T what? Did he not build it? Did he build it? Oh yeah, never mind. Oh yeah, you're not gonna be able to see that very well, but that is over 500 years old, that painting. Look at it. It's like 550 years old and it's still there. Even though with people coming and touching it and putting their grubby fingers all over it, it's still there after 550 years. It's mind blowing, mate. This, this is really old. You can tell this one's well old. It's uh, not built out of marble either, so you can see it's kind of corroding a bit. This is actually not the same king, this is a different king, Akbar. Basically what they did is, as the Mughal kings came and lived here, they all built their own palaces. And this was uh, King Akbar, had his palace over there. Then he had uh, three wives of different religions. The Hindu wife was his favorite, and he got built her two palaces. One here, the winter one, and one here, the summer one. And the only difference between the two is that the summer one has an open back so the air can get through so it keeps it cool whereas the winter one is completely closed and this was just a fountain in the middle for decoration and then the, she had the library here library right and then the, the library here which is all under construction at the minute unfortunately but yeah fucking interesting look at the architecture on these on these uh, on these buildings it's beautiful insane carving. yeah beautiful carving it's just mad it's everywhere the amount of time and effort that would have been put into these and money at the time as well. The outside wall of this place took 12 years to build and there's a moat around the outside and like you hear about in all the all the kids shows and I had a fort when I was little and it had a moat around the outside with crocodiles in it. They actually had crocodiles in the moat around this thing to protect the fort. Mad. Right, look at the grounds. Wait a moment. So I already explained to you about this whole complex, how did you like this? 
Pretty good. Any questions regarding anything? Huh? No. No, oh, no good, questions good, actually. That's pretty well, huh? Yeah. Again, <laughs> again quiz time. Okay. So one question only for both of you. You can see something is there, huh? Yeah. Uh huh. What do you think? What was that? If you'll give me the right answer, you will get one chill beer from my side. <laughs> what do you think that Are is? we allowed to talk mm, amongst ourselves? So I what do you think? Is it a like a, a drinking well? I'll give you one more chance. One more chance. Chill beer is waiting for you, huh? I think a bar. Um, a bar. Or a jacuzzi. Jacuzzi. Yeah, you think. That's not a bad answer. <laughs> that was my next thing. I was oh, going to yeah. say. No, I was. I was. I was going <laughs> to say jacuzzi. Because in all the ports that we've been in, they have like a jacuzzi, haven't they? Yeah. And it's been broken out. So. Yeah. But inside, you can see. Nah, you've, uh, you know what you're doing. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, yeah, now nah, you're getting yourself involved in uh, uh, in this sorry. here with that. Uh, no, get, get. Oh, no, it's okay, thank you. <laughs> oh, sorry, little buddy. I dropped you dropped him. him. Oh, no. You're the worst. Oh, no, it's okay. <laughs> she had no idea what she was getting in, involved in there. The what did you I think? Felt, I <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake. Oh, no. Yeah, you should do. You threw it on the floor. Poor little bugger. All right, guys. Today our guide was Raj. Hi, I'm Raj. How are you? <laughs> he um he speaks German and English and Indian. I would uh, India. <laughs> if you need any advice or are looking for a tour in this area, give me a shout on Instagram. It's right here, and uh, I'll, I'll send you over Raj's details. And he, he's been great, great for the day. So and he. he you can do uh, uh, everywhere in India. Uh, everywhere in yeah, everywhere in India. Oh, everywhere in India. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Yes. Oh, Last yeah. Fifteen he... years I've working as a German and English tour guide. Right. Okay. Cool. Last fifteen years he's been working as an English German tour guide, and he can do anywhere in India. So, right. And he's been good. Very good. Thank so you. So it's been a great day. Definitely recommend.